Hi, welcome to Do Your Kitchen. My name is Felicia, and you know what time of year it is? That's right, it's St. Patrick's Day, corn beef time. I love corn beef. So today, instead of making corn beef and cabbage, which I do enjoy, I'm going to make a corn beef sandwich. Oh, one of the best sandwiches you will ever have. I promise you, I promise. Okay, so I have my special corn beef rub here. And it has um, tomato base, smoked paprika, smoked garlic, and some other things that will be listed in the comments below. But for right now, we're just going to take this um, brisket right here and season it very generously. It's so different. So delicious. What is your favorite way to cook a corned beef brisket okay flip it flip it good -na 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 -na. Mm -hmm. hold on okay <laughs> okay let's turn this over there you go now if you have time to let this sit overnight that would be really good give this um rub a chance to get in there really well if not, you can cook it right away, but if you can at least let it sit for a half hour, it'll make a world of difference. So let's get this in here, get this on here rather. All right, let's get this in here. I'm just gonna try to do it that way, but let's just rub it with our hands here. Maybe a little bit more here. Make sure you get all the sides. Don't be afraid, cause this is a really nice blend right here. And it complements the corned beef really well. Okay. Um, I know they usually have that little spice packet in there. But for this particular recipe, that's not necessary. Because you have all the flavors right here. Alright. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this in some plastic. And let it sit overnight. <laughs> and um, we're going to sear. We're going to pressure cook it. And... Oh, I can't wait. I hope you try this recipe because it's so delicious. Okay, going to get some plastic wrap. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use a Ziploc instead of a plastic wrap. So we're just going to take this bed filler and put it into the Ziploc. Like so. Like so. Like so. Okay, slide that up. Push that down. Seal it up. Squeeze it to get the air out. You fold it a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Alright, so we're going to put this in a refrigerator and let it go and marinate overnight. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to come back and do some searing and do some pressure cooking and build a great sandwich. See you in 24 hours. Okay, so now we're going to sear this off. The meat has been marinating all night so we want to see the steam coming off here the not the steam but the smoke when you're searing you want a hot hot skillet and that means seeing um the smoke rise up off the um, skillet that lets you know that the pan is nice and hot because you want it hot so that it will sear in that flavor right away so now we're going to take this beautiful piece of marinated meat and put it right on there. We're just going to sear this off really good. It's going to look like it's burned, but it's not burned. It's just seared very well. So this is going to sear on each side probably like three to five minutes. So we're going to let this go, and I'll be back. Alright, look at that beautiful sear. Okay, let's see. That side needs to sear just a little bit more. I'm going to get that good crust on here. Searing all of that delicious flavor. I'm going to let this go for another couple of minutes. And we'll get the sides. 
be right back. Okay, I think it's good to go on the bottom. Let's take a look at these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that ear. Yeah. It's so nice. Come on. God can work with me. Work with me. Now, see that scare? That's what we're looking for. So now let's get the side. If we can. There we go. There we go. It was a challenge that I saw and I conquered. Okay, so now we're just going to let this get a good little nice clear on that side. Let's see here. Look how good that clear is on that. Look at that. It's a piece of work, I tell you. It's art. There you go. All right. All right, so I am going to cook this in my pressure cooker. And in the water, I like to season it. So for aromatics, I have um, two tablespoons of dry rosemary, a tablespoon of oregano, and a tablespoon of thyme. I was going to use basil, but I don't have any. <laughs> but I like these ar aromatics in the um, moisture base. Not directly on the meats, but just in the moisture base and I use this little grate right here because I don't want the meat to sit directly on the liquid because I want to keep all the flavor in the um, meat and I don't want to lose any in transaction while um, while it's cooking so it'll sit right on top excuse me right on top of the liquid but it'll take in all of those um, herb aromatics Okay, so we got the corned beef in here with the herbless. And now we're just going to um, let this bed fill go for an hour. And um, my pressure cooker only cooks for an hour at a time at the highest rate. So that's what's going to happen now. Okay, so the toppings that I'm going to use on my sandwich is I have some a white onion here that I just cut up real thin or julienne. <laughs> And I use a Napa cabbage. Only reason I use Napa instead of a regular cabbage is because it's a lighter in color. And I, the flavor is not as strong. It's just the right lightness. So I'm going to saute, saute those together for a topping. And then we're going to make a cheese sauce. Instead of cheese slices, I'm going to make Swiss cheese cream sauce to go on the sandwich. Okay, let's head to the stove. There it is. Okay, we're going to saute these onions and cabbage. So, let's get a little oil in the skillet. Alright. So let's get this on in here all together. It's going to fill it up pretty good. But once everything wilts down, wilts, <laughs> get wilted, it'll all fit. So we're just going to throw this in here as I make a mess. Because <laughs> what is cooking without making a mess? Okay. All right. So I like to wait to put... Um, the seasoning in because um, it uh if you put the salt in now it's going to release that moisture a little bit too early for me I lost that one but uh so I like to let it wilt down on its own first and then I'll add my, my seasoning to it so I'm just gonna 
flip this around easily and carefully because the skillet is full right now. So, I just want to get this, flip it around a little, try to get the um, oil through it. So, take your time because um, you will make a mess or you could be smarter than me and use a bigger skillet. <laughs> so, that's that. All right, so let me grab a lid and um, let this go for a little bit so I can wilt and shrivel and shake and do all the things that it's supposed to do. And we'll be right back to this in about two minutes because we want to keep it stirring because we don't want it to burn. So we'll come back and stir that in about a minute or so. Okay, this is going down as you see. We'll flip it around a little bit more here. You can see it's starting to brown a little bit. So that's why you want to make sure you keep it rotating so that um, it won't burn, but you'll get that nice little caramelization on it. Mmm, doggy. Mmm, Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Alright. Yep, that's looking good. I'm too be impressed. Okay. Let's put this back on real quick and the next round we'll um, season it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the seasonings in here now. Just a little sprinkle of onion powder. Well, that's garlic powder, actually. A little pepper. And a little bit of salt. I'll say that's probably like a half teaspoon of each of those. Just enough to bring the flavor out. Okay, let's get that tossed. Alright, looking good. This is just about how I want it because I don't really want it to caramelize too much. I just want it to be wilted really well. So I'm going to stick this in the bowl and cover it so that the steam can finish um, getting the vegetables a little soft. And then we'll make the cheese sauce. I promise we will. <laughs> okay. okay, we're going to make the cheese sauce. Got about a pad of butter in here. Let me go ahead and let this melt. I must help it along here. All right, get it smooth, 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 smooth. Okay. Whew. Nothing like hot butter. Hot butter. Okay. So let's get like a little half a tablespoon of flour in here. That's all you need. Get this in here. Now you want to make sure that you let this cook a little bit so you can get that floury taste out of it. And keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. That is so important when you're making a roux. Keep it moving. Because you don't want it to burn, especially for butter. It's different if you're making a brown gravy or something. Then, um, you know, you can let it sit. Okay, this is enough because you see how it's starting to get darker here? That is plenty. And don't worry about it because it's all spread out over the skillet. That's cool too. Now i got like a cup of heavy cream right here. Throw that in there. right on up now for the sauce I like to wait until it thickens before I put my seasonings and cheese in it and don't worry it will thicken now use the bottom of your spoon so that um, this will help you not have lumps the same theory goes when you're making homemade gravy I like to use the bottom because I can rub everything 
because if there's something sticking on the bottom <laughs> I can um, pull it off like this so let's just keep on doing this and turn the fire up a little bit so that this can thicken up to get bubbly the bubbly a little bit of the bubbly <laughs> only certain people would know what that means a certain crowd of people yep see it's starting to thicken up now mm -hmm. this is really good in this state like this with just the butter flour and milk it's so tasty see that it's starting to thicken up there now keep it moving keep it moving so important at this stage because you do not want it to lump up coagulate or anything like that so all right that is looking good i'm going to turn the fire down now throw my salt in here a little nutmeg probably just like a quarter teaspoon a little garlic garlic you okay stir it up oh that's beautiful so I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way off now because I don't want it to get any thicker and I need one more thing really quick just for this particular sauce okay so I want to put some um ground mustard in there because you know mustard and corned beef can't go wrong all right, getting a little frantic here. Hungry too, though. All right, well, when are you gonna put the cheese in, man? Right now. Gonna take the cheese. Gonna take the cheese. There it is. Okay. Mmm. Throw some Swiss cheese in here. Um, I'll say about a cup to match the milk, or a cup and a half. Now, see the cheese is cooling this off, so I'm going to turn the fire back on low just to keep it warm enough to melt the cheese as I keep stirring frantically here. <laughs> and you see how it's warming back up again already? Keep it moving, keep it moving. Can't say it enough. Keep it moving. And I think I want some more cheese in here. I like my cheese sauce chisit. For us, it's not chisit. It's not cheese sauce. It's just milk with flour. But that's good too. Just like I said before. Okay, I think I'm good here. And now, there we go. Stir it up. Keep it moving. Look at that. Mmm, okay. Dog head. Dog head. Yep. Looking mighty fine. Mighty good to me. Get out. Look how tender that is. Oh my god. Must be something good going down now. Now, get some. Ooh, look at that. Looks delicious. It's cut like butter. Like butter, I tell you. Butter. I like it nice thick slices like that look at that mm, 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 mm. somebody somebody tell me what that is 
Oh my god, tell me what that is. Look at the juices. So juicy. Hold up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. sneak a piece because I have to do the pull test. Ooh, nice snap. Mmm, got a good, ooh. Hold up. It just hit me out of nowhere. It's good. Told you. It's good. Mm, mm, mm. The rosemary, though. Mmm. Love it. Just the aromatics from the rosemary. It's fantastic. Okay. I'm making a sandwich. That's right. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Mmm. And the rose. So good. Okay. I will supply the link for these rye bonds at the bottom in the comments. I love all the seeds you put on it. I love a good nutty bread. So you can use whatever seeds you want. If you don't like seeds, don't use them. <laughs> so simple, right? Let's build this baby right here. <laughs> okay, let's get some of this cabbage and onions on here. Oh my god. Again, we're going to stop the press. Slide that over here. <laughs> Alright. Put some more of that on there. Toop it off. Okay. Is that a sandwich? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Let's do the round. I'm looking at my monitor. Let's do the rounds. Let's do the rounds. I don't know which side to bite first. Okay. Yes, I do. Cheesy side. Okay. You know I like to dance with my food. Do I cut it or no? Let's cut it. Nothing. Can you see it? Oh. Oh, I want to go closer, but there you go. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's so beautiful, too. so warm and fuzzy and tingly right now. <sighs> Big bite. <laughs> mm. Good. Okay. <laughs> Too big a bite again. That's why I shouldn't make these videos when I'm hungry. But I won't take another bite. Yes, I will. Smaller, okay. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm happy. What's the Irish dance? I don't know. But <laughs> okay. Um, very good. Mm. The rosemary. And the water, when you pressure cook it, just goes all through the brisket. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. 
original. And then with the nuts on top, the seeds, I mean, and uh, the salt and everything. Oh, my God. It's just a party in my mouth right now. So make sure you try this recipe. Mm. Everything individually is delicious and together is phenomenal. Even if I say so myself. And I did. So try the recipe. Hopefully you like it. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm kind of drooling and everything here. <laughs> That's how good it is. Um, yeah. Like, subscribe, comment.